Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. You know, I got a great video. It's gonna be a bunch of pictures from the book and I'm gonna be explaining my childhood, my the book, and uh, some other mob pictures and stuff like that you're gonna probably see. So this is gonna be a series and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm bringing back memories. Here it is, a, it's kind of a rainy day and I thought I'd, I'd do this video uh, because, you know, it's one of those days you sit home, you don't do much, you, you look at your photo albums, you do stuff like that, and I was looking at the book and stuff like that, so I thought I would do this. Before I get started, please check us out on our member programs, check us out on, on Discord. We got the book, Gangster Redemption, that's doing great, and please check out our podcast that it's going out on every Monday and Friday at 8 a.m. It's on all your major podcast uh, platforms. We're having a lot of fun with that as it is. Now, let's get into this video. I think this video is going to be fun. It brings back a lot of memories, so I'm going to give you some childhood stories and some crazy shit that they reminded me of, and we'll go through this like that. And uh, you're going to get to know a little bit more about me, because a lot of people ask, oh, how was your childhood? What was this? They know a little bit of the book, but I'm going to get into it a little bit more detail. So this will be pretty good. Uh, first of all, first picture. I was born. I know this is going to sound, man, it makes me feel old. I was born in 1961, probably older than most people that watch this channel, probably older than most of your parents of the people that watch this channel, uh, just the way it is, and that's all right. Uh, I feel young. I was born October 3rd, 1961, which is uh, next soon. I'll be 60 years old. I mean, it's just wild, man. Really is wild, and uh, but this is a little picture. As you can see in this picture, I mean, just look at this little picture. I mean, that's the way they had them back then. It wasn't like uh, <laughs> you know, I had curly hair. I know, I know what you're all gonna say. Where do you see me with hair in some of these pictures? Uh, yeah, I had hair and all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna see pictures from my Coast Guard days. You see pictures, but. This is my childhood. I was born in uh, North Shore Hospital, just over the Throgs Neck Bridge. Uh, I'm born in the Bronx, really. I mean, that's the house I was at. I was the fourth child of five. I have uh, an older sister still around. I have an older sister who passed at a young age of 56 years old. Then I got my, my brother is the next in line, which you all know him, and he's a partner in crime, I guess, and uh, you know, we're very, very close. Then you have me, who was born in 1961, and then you have my sister who passed also at 49 years old, uh, my sister Donna. So we're gonna get to the next picture. I am, at this point, I am about seven years old. It says it right there. Now these, the reason I'm doing these pictures, people asked about them, they're in the book. They're in the Gangster Redemption book, a lot of these pictures, and, and, and other places you could find these pictures. I, I look at me, a little blonde, cute kid, little bow tie hat on. Look what I fucking became. Oh my God, this is wild. But anyway, here I am uh, as a little blonde kid. You know, it was funny, my grandmother used to call me lover boy because I was always uh, kissing the girls and, and I was this cute little blonde haired kid. You know, it's funny, you know, my parents, we have five brothers and sisters and you know, three of them are blondes. Myself, my two sisters who passed actually, and the two were more dark hair, uh, my brother and my sister. Now, we used to say that different genes, probably different fathers, only kidding, of course. Uh, but it was it's a running joke. And uh, I don't know if it means the genes, you know, and my sis, two sisters died of cancer. Uh, not me, obviously. And uh, I don't have anything. I seem to be pretty healthy for, for the most part. And uh, so this little, this is in the Bronx. And we would be running the streets already. I mean, when I say running the streets, they dress you up in pictures. This was a big deal, a color picture back then. As you can see, my birth picture was not color. So I'll go to another picture. All right, here is my family. I think you need to see, you know, the whole family to understand that, you know, understand us as a family. And uh, I think that this is pretty cool. Okay, obviously. You guys are probably gonna say, oh, that's my grandmother kind of hair my mother has. You know, they had that bamfu. I used to call them the bamfu hair. I, I get a kick out of that shit. So that's my dad. As you can see, my, I'm right in front of my dad in this picture. And uh, obviously, I get my hair from my dad. 
I actually can grow hair all on the side, but I, I, I'm a little bald on top. Uh, you've seen it in other pictures, and now I'm getting more and more, but I can actually grow hair like that. I used to call that the horseshoes and stuff. I don't want to do that. Uh, I'd rather keep it shaved. As you can see, there's three blonde young kids right there. That's the two, my two sisters who passed. The younger one in the middle is Donna. The one on top of that is, is Lynn, and uh, I'm on the left. And my dad, and then my brother, you all know him. And then my sister Debbie, the oldest, is behind him. And of course, my mom. So my mom is still alive, you know that. I mean, she, a matter of fact, it's funny because when I do podcasts, you know, this is the real deal podcast. Anything happens, people come and go. Uh, I've seen the mailman come in, my, my brother, Paul, my nephew, people. People pop in, and, and I want you to feel like you're in on a conversation. I want you to feel like you're part of the crew or part of the people here. And I, I think we're doing that. And, and I, I don't want to stop doing that. But we lived in Locust Point at this time. We had a four block area where we lived, which is really nice. We lived on Hatting, and then you had Ge uh, Glennon, Geegridge, and Tierney Place. And then that's under the bridge. I did a video on that, but you'd see the bridge and stuff I showed in my house. But now I'm showing pictures of the family, which I, I've never done before. And I wanted to do this. And people ask from the book, hey, I saw these pictures. Can you give us a little info, insight on the pig people in the pictures? And this is the family end of the pictures. And I wanted to do that as well. So that's just a family picture. And it was a big deal to get like dressed up for something like this. You know, we had our Sunday outfits back then, and you know, uh, my bad stuff from being abused at a church, and, and I didn't really, I think that's how you crazy, just see the crazy eyes of Larry. Eh, that was just it. Okay, here is me, and this is a cool picture you're gonna look at, and you're gonna see Larry in what they call, I was a, a little league baseball player. My brother was very, very good. I was pretty good too. Uh, I was a good hitter. My brother had an arm that could, could have made the major leagues, sadly, he didn't. Uh, I'm gonna read the cap. This this actual picture's in a book, I think. And this is me, I was on, uh, uh, what is this? I was on the Braves at that time, and little number seven, you know, look at me and my little, my little outfit, is that cool as hell? Uh, that was in, in we, that we went to Throg's Neck Little League. It was really a really good little league. Uh, matter of fact, my brother went to Williams, Williamsport uh, Pennsylvania to the World Series, the Little League World Series. So that's pretty cool. But I'm gonna read the little caption that was cut out of a paper. Now this, now you gotta remember, I'm nine years old now. Nine years old. Uh, playing in the Little League and it says, the Braves of the school league led by slugging Larry Lawton down the Giants 9-4 and the Dodgers 4-3. Lawton's Grand Slam beat the Giants, and his sixth inning circuit shot did it to the Dodgers. We were actually coached by my dad, and a guy named, I remember this, well, Myers. His son, I think, made the major league. He was a great ball player. Uh, he was a chiropractor, a guy, actually, and he was a really nice guy. And he was one of the coaches with my dad. My dad was a very good ball player. He made the last 50 cuts of the New York Yankees. Back when he tried out after the war in 1945, I think it was, they don't, they didn't have farm teams like that. They didn't send you to a farm team. You either made the team or you didn't. And there were, you know, thousands of people that would go try out. My dad was one of the last cut, 50, last 50 people cut. And he was just, he was a great ball player, played out through the Navy. My dad was in the Navy, I'm retired Coast Guard. He wasn't retired, but he was in World War II in the Navy. And, uh, you know, he used to teach us. I mean, let me tell you, it's funny. You know, we used to play, at this time, we used to play stickball. And I mean competitive stickball in New York City. A little older than this now, when we were teenagers and stuff. My brother was so good, we won. My brother and I won the uh, uh, stickball tournament uh, for the boroughs. Uh, Two-man stickball. You couldn't hit him. And I was a good hitter. It was funny, because myself and my dad, were the only two people who could hit my brother, you know, hit him with a baseball, you know, you know, with a stickball bat because he was so good. But we knew him, we grew up with him. You know, you do something, you see something every day, it's pretty easy to do, but other people couldn't pay. He was an amazing pitcher, my brother. Still is, he got a great arm. 
But uh, anyway, these are the little leak pictures, so I thought I'd show you that one. Now I'm gonna get to where I'm a little bit of a bad kid, if you wanna call that. Now, not bad, this is after me being abused. I was 12 years old, I was abused at 11. But here I was 12 years old. Now, as you could probably see in my eyes, I was a little bit of a, I was a blonde head, good looking little kid, but I was also running the streets already. Uh, I was a hustler, I wanted to make money. I think a lot of that had to do with my past. And uh, my, my writer who did the book, A Gangster Redemption, Peter Golenbach, said, hey Larry, I, I know you. We, we took two years to write the book. And Peter said, there's no question in my mind that all your shit started after your abuse. So it had to do a lot with that. And I think it did. And I'm gonna show you a, uh, a report card. And I think I was just trying to uh, act out or you know, be cool, uh, you know, express my manhood or whatever you wanna call it or my heterosexuality or whatever it is instead of thinking your homosexuality or homosexual or whatever. Which I don't believe anything is anybody. I think you are who you are and that's the end of that. I'm not a big title guy. I don't believe people should have titles. I think you should enjoy your life. But this was uh, one of my cute pictures. Again, I was a lo little young kid in the Bronx. <laughs> it's funny. It was, you know, you're learning about your, your everything you do. I mean, you know, from masturbation to everything else at about 12, 13 years old. And once you find that stuff, it's over. It's, it's fun time. And uh, it's just part of life, obviously. But now I'm gonna show you a picture of this. This is an actual report card from me at 11 years old, 1970. Uh, well, September 72 to June of 73, and I was born in 61, so I was right there. And I'm just gonna read my all my marks. First quarter, look at this, religion B, religion B, A, A. Reading skills, C, B, B plus, I went to an A. I'm a read junkie to this day. Spelling, 88, 88, 97, 100, I ended up on. Language, 75, 50, 50, 74. And I don't know if that is language, just language arts, I guess. And, and I was pretty, you know, didn't give a fuck, streeting it already. Uh, composition and literature. C plus, C minus, dash, C minus. Then mathematics, 96, 96, 93, 95. I'm good with math in the head, and that's all about numbers. History and civics, 79, 86, 80, and 80. Art got a C plus. Now, what I wanna show you guys, something here, cause if you look at my book, the first chapter is, I think, uh, I want to fuck Miss Armelino. I know it's a real weird way of chapter and let me even look. I think that's the name of the chapter. It's, oh no, who wants to fuck Miss Armelino? And uh, yeah, who wants to fuck Miss Armelino? Well, she was the teacher that I liked. Look at the name on that. Mrs. J Armelino. Man, this is just some memories. Uh, obviously I didn't go back to the church and I got kicked out of that school for doing that uh, and I was probably they wanted to get rid of me anyway and my family in fact my sister and brothers graduated uh, St. Francis de Chantal and they went on to to uh, high school or middle school yeah high school me I didn't make it I had to go to a public middle school because they they wanted me out my sister uh, well they wanted me out, and that, that's what did it. I mean, it was sad as that is, that is what did it. Okay, let's go to a next picture, which, which is gonna bring back a lot of memories for me. This is my Coast Guard days. This is my boot camp picture. Now, you guys all know me as a pretty big guy. I'm five foot nine, 245. Uh, pretty big, you know, I used to be able to lift lots of weights and all that kind of stuff, back in the gym again. I should start filming that. Uh, but anyway, here I am, I go in the Coast Guard. I was five foot seven, 132 pounds, 132 pounds. 
I was in shape though. I mean, I used to do a, a 140, 150 push-ups straight. I used to have push-up challenges in the service. So I did a lot of those. Uh, I, I ended up going to Pataluma, California, which uh, Alameda is where it is, but it's Pataluma. Uh, I went to the boot camp out there and it was crazy. I lived in New York and they had a boot camp in Cape May, New Jersey. Why wouldn't they send you there? I guess that's just the way it went. That next class, they had me on a plane going to California. I'd never been on a plane at that point. And I went on a plane all the way to California and went to boot camp. And you didn't have your mom coming to visit. They didn't come to my graduation. They, my, my parents couldn't afford that kind of stuff. Go across the country and into a graduation. Uh, just couldn't do it. It was part of the service and that was it. And uh, that was my, and that was in August of uh, 1979. So yes, I I'm bearing to the world and to everybody here how old I am. I don't feel old. I, I, I don't believe I'm old. Uh, I act young, I party, I like to hang out. But I think my life experience helps me educate young, young people here. And that and that's just not from the prison, it's from life experience. It's, it's what your parents have over you if you're watching this and you're young and I don't care how old you are you could be 30 and your parents got experience over you and it's gonna happen for the rest of your life until they get to the point like my mom my mom's 88 and now it's like she's reverting you know it's sad but she's reverting back to a child uh, at 88 their mind starts going they they repeat they do the, the little things it's really crazy uh, but it is life and it's the cycle of life and I'm, I'm all right with everything that ever happens in life and I, I do believe that and I want to stay that way and I think that's pretty cool as far as that goes. Now I'm going to give you some more book pictures because everybody wants but I want another Coast Guard picture I'm going to show. Uh, you guys are going to see this. Well, this is before. Let me, let me, this is while I was in the Coast Guard and this was coming back on leave from the Coast Guard and meeting one of my first I guess you could call it my first love or my first one of my one of my girlfriends that I uh, you know used to date now look at that picture there that, that girl's name Angela I won't give her last name out She's still cute I look at her she's a cutie uh, this is in a bar now at this picture, I think I'm 18 years old, maybe 19 years old, maybe 18, and she is 17 or 18. Uh, and look where we're sitting. We're at bar, thinking, drinking. I'm drinking a, a orange juice, vodka and orange juice. And it's funny because back then, the drinking limit and the drinking age, legal drinking age, was 18. Yeah, 18 years old. You can go to a bar, sit in the bar and order a drink. You know, the age, obviously today, the legal drinking limit is, 18, is 21. Personally, I believe if any person is serving in the military at all, they should be allowed to go into a bar. I don't give a shit if they're 17 years old. If they can give you a rifle and give you the responsibility to pull a trigger and shoot somebody in the defense of this country, of course, then you should have the right to drink. That's bullshit on the biggest level that you're telling some 19 year old, a 20 year old kid in the, in, the, in the Marines or wherever, you can't drink. But I'm gonna give you all this million dollar equipment. I'm gonna make you drive a fucking tank. I'm gonna tell you you gotta go kill those 10 people. But you know what? You're not responsible enough to drink. That's the biggest bullshit in the world. It really is. And I don't give a fuck what country it's in. I do know Canada's 19 age for drinking, uh, but I believe in America and you're in the military. I don't give a shit. If you're in the military at 17 years old and they accept you, you should be able to drink in a bar with a military ID card. I'm not all for young people really going to, uh, at, you know, overseas and killing people. I think they come back messed up. And there's no, no doubt they do. And it's sad, but what are you gonna do? I mean, how do, I just don't like the way we treat our, our veterans coming home. They, they belong getting the best treatment in the world, uh, PTSD, job training, whatever it takes. 
We cannot expect the person to go to overseas and kill somebody and come back here and be normal at that age. The brain is not even fully developed. Uh, and, it, it, you know, we have too much suicide. We have too many people come back from the military and they commit suicide. And here's why. And I really get it. When you're in the military, there's, a, there's such a bond. You, you literally are dying with each other. You watch your friends die or you die or, or something happens, you get wounded and you didn't die and you have survivor's guilt. And there's so many, so many things that they can't process at such a young age. And, and, and it's understandable. And, uh, you know, now we, we, we don't give that them. Now they come back out of the military and, you know, fuck you, you can't even work anyway. You gotta do anything. They don't give really, really true job stuff for, for veterans. There is jobs for veterans, uh, and there are, and they should get them. But I don't think they get the the camaraderie and the unity. And, and, and You know, listen, when you're overseas in a war, it's life and death. Your decision, you miss an IED in, in, in the ground, you're dead. People die, you know. In, in America, you come back and you get a job, and you and you, you know, you miss an order. What the fuck? The guy misses his order. Big fucking deal. How do you process that? And then they yell at you for that or some shit. I could see why these guys can't handle it when they come back. Uh, you know, it's sad. I know the I know the camaraderie. I was on a ship with men. I was on a, a, a the the close knit camaraderie. And, and what being in the military is like. And it's amazing. I just don't, you know, feel bad. But this picture here made me smile. Uh, Angela, I actually spoke to her not that long, maybe a year or two ago, maybe two years before the pandemic. And, uh, you know, I got to see her. She's such a good person. She was a good person back then. Cute as, a, cute as a butt. And I used to like that one, really. That was pretty, one of my first girlfriends. Okay, now we're going to talk about my, one of my duty stations I was at in the Coast Guard. And I was in Sandy Hook, New Jersey. And here I am, a E-4, which was a BOSA mate. And I was stationed at Coast Guard Station, Sandy Hook, New Jersey. Yeah, Sandy Hook is at the tip of New York. You can see New York right from it. Uh, you, actually, I was even on the uh, uh, West Bank Lighthouse, which was, was a right entrance to New York. I was also, you know, right near the Barrazano Bridge, where that was right up to our where we patrol up there. But this is out front, in front of the thing. White glove, must have been a chain of command or something. I had none of my ribbons on at this time and stuff like that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to do more pictures. We're going to do prison pictures. We're going to do gangster pictures. We're going to do some of me growing up in, in, in the early days. Uh, picture so we're gonna keep this going every so often. I think people want to know about where I come from who I am uh, It's it's amazing. I look at some youtubers. I started researching them. I, I don't know anything about them uh, Kid I mean if you want to know about Larry Lawton, you can go Google what prisons he was in what his crimes were What, what his organization his family anything there's some youtubers and whatever the position is I mean I know another prison youtuber and I couldn't tell you what prison he went to, where he time. You want to look up my cases? You want to do everything? I don't know what their real deal is in prison or what they did in prison or to get out of prison or whatever. I don't know. But it's amazing. I, just, it was, I want to be an open book. I want my life, this part of my life, to be an open book. Do I have a private life? Absolutely. Everybody does. Uh, but as far as my what I talk about on YouTube, what I talk about on TikTok and Instagram, I know what I'm talking about because I lived it. And uh, you're gonna learn more and more about me. And I'll, I'll, I wanna thank you for being a subscriber. If you're not, please subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, you're gonna and look in the Gangster Redemption playlist. That's a great series that's out there. And, and please tell your friends, post this or something. Have a great day, everybody. Please make good choices. I always say that because I don't want you to go down the path I did. Make good choices, live your life, respect others, and do something good for somebody every day. Have a great day, everybody. Stay strong.